Good morning, everybody. I'm Rita Hickman, and thanks for joining me today. We do these live streams every morning, Monday through Friday, 815 CST, right here. So today we're taking a field trip into my backyard. And there's a, rare, a really good reason for that. Because, dun 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 Here, let me switch it around. We have got my little crocuses coming up. They're so beautiful. Even though it's been a, hey Robin and a TV dad, and Kathy's here too. We've got so many wonderful ones popping up. And this is, I know it is beautiful to be outside. They're coming up in purples and they're coming up in whites. And even though there's frost, put you back around. Even though there's frost, um, it's wonderful to see. So this is one of my favorite versions of self-care where I surround myself with beauty. Now, being in the self-care industry, being a shiatsu massage therapist, hey Steve, good to see you. Being a massage therapist, being in the self-care industry, I, um, I tend to like to do things which are more relaxing, which are more nurturing and supporting and compassionate and all that other great stuff. Um, or taking walks in the woods and that's the direction I tend to go but today I want to talk about a little bit um, different types of self-care that uh, we don't talk about much not just in my industry but in the world most times when people talk about self-care what they're saying is pampering they're saying go get a facial go get a massage do something that makes you feel good go walk on the beach go on a vacation what they fail to think about with self-care hey Nicole is that self-care is also giving yourself what you need at any point in time. If it means that it's five minutes extra in the shower, that's what it is. If it means that, it, and, and this is kind of funny actually, whenever I'm not feeling good, whenever I'm really not feeling good, I will lay in bed and my husband will come see me and uh, I will say, hey Sherry, I won't say hey Sherry, sorry. <laughs> and I will say, oh, I'm suffering, I am suffering, and I just need to lay here and suffer. You know, and I will, and I'll let myself suffer and feel miserable and have my little pity party until I'm done with it. That's a version of self-care too. You know, everybody's like, oh, you're having a pity party, you're feeling sorry for yourself. But you know what? When we deny our feelings, we're betraying ourselves again, like we probably have most of our life, which is why we're in the position we're in of being overly stressed and freaked out. You know, because we're all trying to be nice, happy people and it's just not working. So sometimes self-care is doing the things which are what you need right now. I have a really great rule of thumb. And my rule of thumb is when I don't know what to do, I ask myself what I need. And I actually got this from a woman who um, struggled with staying indoors all the time. She had terrible social anxiety. And she handled it by every moment when she was stressed out saying, what do I need right this second? What do I need right this second? What do I need right now? And she would continue to ask herself that and meet those needs. Maybe the need was um, now I need to write or now I need to be mad or now I need to stop around the house or now I need to eat a Twinkie. <laughs> Self-care isn't just all the beautiful fluffy cloud rainbow unicorn stuff. Self-care is also doing the things which our mind and body need at any point in time. It's not always pretty and it's not always nice and it doesn't always fit the, the mold of self-care. But it's these areas that we're really lacking because if you look around, what's happening to people? What's happening is that they're holding it in and holding it in and holding it in and then it's turning into a health issue or it's blowing up all over the place over everybody that they care about or inappropriate ways or they're constantly stalking around being angry. You know, that's actually a, a very common tendency of people who don't feel good. What they do is they keep it to themselves and then they just walk around in this energy, in this glowering, angry vibration that just reeks off of them. You know, instead of saying, what do I need right now? They just try to control the emotion instead of realizing they have to find a way to channel it. So I was talking to somebody the other day and they said to me, they said, I'm angry at myself. And I said, well, let's not pinpoint it on yourself, you know, because your brain will always try to find reasons as to what's going on inside of you. But your brain will also lie to you. 
It'll also give you false information or it'll only give you one small piece of information. I said, start with the fact I'm angry and then what do you want to do about that? Without pinning any blame, any shame, without pointing any fingers, without even trying to figure it out. Just recognizing I'm angry, what do I want to do? Okay, I wanna go for a walk. I'm hurt. What do I want to do? I want to lay in bed and uh, moan that I'm suffering for the next 15 minutes. You know, what do I want to do? I want to pray. I feel empty and helpless and hopeless. What do I want to do? What do I need right now? Right now I need to stare at the wall. When I used to teach kindergarten, hey Lisa, uh, when I would teach kindergarten, we had 26 kids in the morning and 28 in the afternoon. How overwhelming. Yes, there were two of us, of course. And actually, I was the kindergarten assistant at the time. But what would happen is after such an insane sort of day of kids crying and peeing themselves and hiding under tables and they smell and they're, and they're messing up the bathroom and they're screaming at each other and they're hitting each other because they have all sorts of crazy issues going on. You know, after a full day of that, we would both go home and we would stare at the wall for about 45 minutes to an hour because that's what we needed right now. That was our version of self-care right that moment. So when you're not quite sure whether you should do self-care or not, you always need to do self-care. If you're not quite sure what type of self-care you should do, you should ask yourself. And if you don't trust your own opinion, pray about it. Somebody will give you an answer or pull a tarot card about it. Somebody will give you an answer or make a list and muscle test it. Oh my gosh, there's a million different ways to find out what you need at any point in time, at any moment, anywhere. And if you don't meet those needs, what happens is that you end up destroying yourself, even if it's just on a small level, you know, dying quicker, wearing out your body, you end up uh, damaging your relationships, causing all sorts of problems. You know, when you don't get your needs met, whatever those needs may be, hey Ruth, then things do not work out. So remember, it's not about placing blame or pointing fingers. It's about saying, this is where I'm at, this is what's going on, and what do I wanna do about it? What do I need to do about it? I watched a neat thing on Oprah the other day, and Oprah was talking about forgiveness. And she said, many people talk about forgiveness and they wanna talk about um, hoping or wishing that the past were different. You know, they look at their life and they say, I wish my past were different. And she says, that's not what it's about. Acceptance and forgiveness is recognizing that the past is what the past is. Now what do I want to do about it? It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it all right. It just says, this is where we're at. This is what happened. How do I want to handle this? And what do I want to do about it? And that is self-care. It's not about falling down the blame game. Although sometimes we all need to do that. Sometimes we need to set the timer for 15 minutes and blame our miseries on everybody else. That is self-care too, you know? So if you're stuck, look at yourself and say, what do I need right now? Even if you're asking it, you know, 60 times in 60 seconds, because that's how you work your way out of these stressful situations and get to a positive point of view and get to a good place in your life, okay? Cool. So tomorrow's Friday, which is the last live stream of the week. So put any comments below wherever you're seeing this. If you're seeing it, you know, on YouTube, if you're seeing it on Facebook, if you're seeing it in my email list, please comment. Tell me what you're working through. Tell me what you'd like help with. Uh, send some love. I really appreciate the validation and the support. And be a part of the community because this is becoming an amazing community of really cool, supportive, loving, kind, awesome women. And because of that, um, we're really going to make a big difference in the world. Okay? You're welcome, Julie. I hope all of you have a great rest of your day. Oh, hey, Stan. <laughs> you joined us right at the end. Bye.